want to congratulate you on your record for locating lost accounts, Hanover. You can be proud of it. Thank you, Mr. Lanigan. I do my best. Well, there are some others around here to take a lesson from you. Send Jimmy Parker in here. This is terrible. Hello, boss. What's a good word? The word isn't good. Sit down. What makes you think you're a skip tracer? Well, because I spend my time chasing skip accounts, I guess. But you don't find them. Twenty accounts last month, and you locate only three of them. But they were tough ones. All skip accounts are tough. That's right. If they weren't, we wouldn't get them. The stores would collect them themselves. Look at Han over here. You never hear him squawking about tough ones. Out of 20 accounts last month, he locates 18 of them. Repossessed the merchandise in 15 cases and got cash in the other three. He's what I call a skip tracer. Yeah, I guess you'd call him that, among other things. What was that crack? I said, uh, uh, well, <laughs> I just uh, talking out loud. Uh, nasty habit, what? Well, keep your remarks to yourself. There's only one thing that counts around here, results. And you better show me some in the next 30 days or the firm will try and struggle along without you. You understand? Yes, sir. Uh, say, uh, it, it's almost six o'clock. Is there anything else you want? Oh, uh, yes, yes, there is, if you don't mind. Here are a couple of calls you can make on your way home. They're right in your neighborhood. You mean you want me to do this this evening? Yes, yeah, sure. Now, one of these skips is a redhead named Lulu Driscoll. She's been dodging us for three months. When you talk to her, keep your mind on your work. Bring in her radio or we lose this account and it's one of our biggest. But I got a date. So what? You got a date with me 30 days from today to show me why I shouldn't fire you. Try mixing a little business with pleasure once in a while. It'll help your record. I'll expect a complete report on these two calls in the morning. Okay. Good night, boss. Good night. Good night, rodent. Hello, Pop. Oh, hello, sir. Hey, shut that thing off. I get enough of that all day in the police car without listening to it at night. Oh, gee, Pop, I want to tune in on Gangland. He was swell last night. Jim and have the mobs around. I want to see if they got away. Turn off that radio. And it's enough that your father is a cop chasing criminals all day without you tuning in a gangster program? Now shut it off this minute. What's all the fuss about? Oh, gee, Pop won't let me tune in on Gangland. Well, you're right, I won't. I get enough of that all day on a short wave. I want to read my paper in peace. Your father's right, Michael. Oh, yeah? I bet he's reading about crime right now. See what I tell you. Movie star robbed of jewel. You were reading that, weren't you, Pop? And I guess you got me, son. I just can't seem to keep away from crime. Who was the movie star, John? Corrine Hill. Now, listen to this. Corrine Hill robbed while sleeping. Wall safe is looted. Jewels valued at $100,000 were stolen last night from a Woodwar wall safe in the mansion of glamorous Corrine Hill, motion picture star. Police staffed the robbery an inside job and immediately questioned Stephen Brady, popular man about town and badminton expert, said to be Miss Hill's fiance. Brady later was released. John Lawrence, the star's business manager, has posted a reward of $10,000 for the return of the gems. Gee, Pop, why don't you catch the robbers and get the $10,000? Why don't you, huh? It's not as easy as that, son. Why not? But if I was a cop, I'd have those criminals in jail in no time. Say, how's about burying your badge and your gun? Well, I mean, I could start hunting the criminals tonight, and I'd probably have the $10,000 in the morning, then I could buy a radio of my own and I could listen to any program I wanted to. Say, you better stop hunting criminals and get to your homework. You know, if you don't get an education, you'll grow up to be a policeman, just like your father. Well, then I won't do my homework at all. Hey, don't argue with your mother. Get to your studies. All right. But you're just tossing $10,000 right out the window. <laughs> I could catch those criminals. Jesus, you're almost ready. Oh, thank you, Michael. That's very sweet of you. Ouch, let go of my ear. How do I look? Oh, you look lovely, dear. Yeah, too pretty to be going out of that Jimmy Parker. Now, Jimmy's a nice boy, John. Yeah. And you better be putting your shoes on before he gets here. Me? Put my shoes on for a skip tracer? How does he rate so much? Pounding widows and wash women and poor working men when they can't pay their bills. 
What about yourself? You do a little hounding being a policeman. Besides, Jimmy isn't always going to be a skip tracer. It's only day until you find something better. Then we're going to get married. I always said love was like a bee. It would just as soon light on a skunk cabbage as the sweetest rose. John, don't you dare call Jimmy a skunk cabbage. Oh, all right, all right. I'll take back the cabbage. Dad, you're terrible. Uh. Oh, there's Jimmy now. And John, you better be putting on your shoes before he gets here. Put them on. Oh, all right. <laughs> but no coat. Hello, honey. <laughs> Gee, you look beautiful. You don't look so bad yourself. Here's a posy for you. Hope it matches that dress. <laughs> Let's go ahead and see the folks. Hello, Mom. Hello, Jimmy. <laughs> you're looking younger every day. Blarney, you know I'm an old woman. No, no kidding. You're as young and beautiful as your daughter, and believe me, that's something. <laughs> oh. Hello, Pop. How's crying? There's too much of it. And don't you dare kiss my hand. <laughs> Greg said to you, my Pop. <laughs> he ought to be on the radio. <laughs> Oh, Pop, you shouldn't go to all that trouble just for me. What trouble? Putting on your shoes. That's too much formality. <laughs> <laughs> just treat me like one of the family. You ready, honey? <laughs> Good night, Mom. Good night, children. Good night. I'll be seeing you. What for? <laughs> <laughs> he kills me. Take off your coat. What is this? Don't ask so many questions. Take off your coat. Where'd you get it? Oh, just a little thing I picked up on the way home. Here, put it on. <laughs> Look. Genuine Japanese weasel. <laughs> and it's yours. Uh, for tonight, anyway. I don't have to turn it in at the office till the first thing in the morning. Gee, it fits you, doesn't it? Oh, it's lovely. But do you think I ought to wear it tonight? Sure, it's perfectly okay. Nobody will know the difference. <laughs> and if you like it, maybe you'll be owning it. If it isn't redeemed in five days, I can buy it for the balance due. <laughs> Nothing too good for the future, Mrs. James Parker. How do you like that? I'm afraid I'm going to like it very much. Well, that's that. Well, come on. Gee, I feel sorry for the girl who lost his coat. So do I, but it can't be helped. Too many people buy things on the nothing down dollar when you catch them plan. It encourages dead beats and makes liars out of honest people. Don't you feel sorry when you take things away from people who can't pay? We've been all over that before. It's a job until I get something better. Speaking of jobs, I may not have this one very long if I don't get some action. Where are you going? This isn't the way to the coconut grove. I've got a business call first. A business call? Can't we ever have an evening together without a business call? Now, don't you bore me out. The boss did enough of that this afternoon. Besides, I'll have this washed up in five minutes flat. Then we'll be on our way to fun and frivolity. Oh, I'm sorry, Jimmy. I didn't mean to snap at you. Oh, that's all right. I like to hear you pop off like that once in a while. It means we won't battle so much after we're married. That's what you think. Here it goes. Be back in a minute, honey. In the meantime, have some music. There you are, Coconut Grove. Yeah, let's try and get there tonight. And don't let me come back here and catch you dancing with some other guy either. You're a little cramped, don't you think? <laughs> Sure, I get it, Miss Driscoll. You don't want to see anybody but Ronnie Cartwright. Okay, nobody else will get past me. Cheerio. Three cheerios for you, handsome. What's on your mind? Would you mind giving Miss Driscoll a bit of a jingle for me? Tell her that Ronald is here. Any last name? Well, quite naturally. My father's. See, uh, Miss Driscoll and myself are on, uh, shall we say, Intimate hailing acquaintance? <laughs> she calls me Ronnie. I get it. I'll tell her you're here. Uh, no, I, I just another thought just occurred to me. Uh, I'd rather call again if Miss Driscoll has a bit of a crowd about her. She's alone. Fact is, she's expecting you. Then I shall jolly well go right up. <laughs> Did it? Cheerio. 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 Sorry to 
keep you waiting, Ronnie. Did... What are you doing in my apartment? Oh, hello. Just what is the idea? Now, well, don't get sore, Miss Driscoll. I knocked on the door and you invited me in. Don't flatter yourself. What do you want? That or the balance due on it. I'm from Skip Traces Limited. Oh, I thought you were a burglar at first. No, just an honest worker man come to take your radio, unless you want to pay up on it. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm afraid I can't pay just now. You see, I lost my job about four months ago, and I haven't worked since. I should be able to make a payment very soon, though. I'm sorry, but the radio still has to go. We'll keep it in the warehouse for five days. If you want to redeem it, pay up. You're not going to take my radio. Now, listen, sister, I try to be a gentleman with you, but it looks like you want to make things tough for yourself. You never intended to pay us the balance anyway, and you changed your address five times to throw us off the trail. Now that we got you, the radio goes. You can't get away from the law. Oh, so you're John Law. Listen, Four Flusher, I know my rights. Now you get out of here before I call some real law on you. Sing it, sister, but the radio still goes. We'll see about that. <laughs> call the police. There's a burglar in my apartment. Hurry up. You come back here. Stop. You got my radio. You come back here. Help, boys. He's got my radio. Help. Somebody stop him. He's got my radio. Wait a minute, wait a minute here. I'm not a thief. I'm an authorized agent of Skip Traces Limited. I'm repossessing her radio. Oh, yeah? Where's your accent? The cops are coming, Miss Driscoll. They'll take care of this imposter. Let's see you cheerio your way out of this one, big boy. You know what the rules are about Just this thing. Just a minute, you. In five no matter. I can explain everything. I was dressing, this. officer, and the doorbell rang. I thought it was a friend of mine, so I called him in. I can explain this whole thing, officer. Shut up. Let the lady talk. Well, imagine my surprise when I walked into my drawing room to find this, this creature stealing my radio. I tried to stop him, but he overpowered me. You're not going to fall for that, are you, officer? She wouldn't know a drawing room if it jumped up and bit her in the ankle. Besides, I wasn't stealing a radio. Here, I'm James Parker of Skip Traces Limited. That's my card. This woman has been ducking us for months. Officer, I demand that you arrest this man. I'll be delighted to prefer charges. That's okay with me, kid, but the radio goes right on down to the police station. Oh, no, it don't. The radio stays in the lady's apartment until the judge decides who's right in this Brannigan. Give it to her. But, oh, oh, gee, officer, I got to... Give the lady the radio. Thank you, officer. Now, if you'll just give me a few moments to dress, I'll be happy to accompany you to headquarters and prefer charges against this... this brute. Okay, we'll wait. All right, bring it up. Hello. Tip, tip. See you in jail, Ronnie. Come on. But, officer, you're making a mistake pinching me. Besides, I got a date. You got a date with the judge. Sit down. See you. Close that door. What's the idea of getting mixed up with the cops? Well, I was expecting Ronnie with some money and the skip tracer busted in. Why didn't you let him have the radio? No good anyhow. That's what you think. I'll show you why I didn't let him have it. Listen, Brainless, it's a good thing he didn't get away with this. Yeah, I know. That's why I gave him an argument. I figured that if he had... Shut up and get dressed. You got yourself tangled with the cops, now you have to go down and sign the complaint. But as soon as you get back, we're getting out of this place. Quick. That'll make the landlord happy. He asked me for the rent again today. Don't worry about that. We'll have plenty of money as soon as we get rid of these jewels. You hope? Jimmy! What's wrong? Wait a minute. It's just a little misunderstanding, honey. I've got to go down to police headquarters for a few minutes. Just a little matter to take care of. I'll be out of there before you can say Jack Robinson so we can... conversation? Are you his girl? Why, yes. Okay. You go to headquarters, too. Now, wait a minute, officer. I didn't... probably an accomplice. Uh, um, uh, gun malls, you call them, don't you, officer? Now, wait a minute. Nobody's taking her down any police station. I won't stand for Get it. Get in the car. I'm a taxpayer. Who isn't? Get in the car. In the car. You go to headquarters with him, miss. Thank you, officer. Move over, miss. Headquarters, wise guy, and no funny business.
unlawful entry, grand larceny, disturbing the peace, and attempted attack. Sure he didn't do anything else, miss? I think that covers everything. You're making a big mistake, Sergeant. Quiet. Take him on back. Come on, sonny boy. Now, wait a minute. Don't you worry about a thing, honey. You can't do this to us. You talk too much. Wait a minute. All right, Matron. Take her on back, too. Come along, dearie. You can't put me in jail. My father's a policeman. Well, that ought to make you feel at home. Come on. You'll appear at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning to press the complaint. It'll be a pleasure. And thank you so much, Sergeant. You've been very sweet. Oh, that's all right. Bye. Oh, bye. Put more wrist action in your stroke, both of you, and watch your footwork. Oh, darling, you are so clever. I'm afraid I'll never learn. Well, you'll learn if you have to weigh you down to a nub. Don't be such a grouch. It's a sign that's good for you. Not at 7 o'clock in the morning, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's try it again. All right, darling. Sir? This is my idea of doing nothing at all. So why do you do it? Somebody has to protect you against that crook. He is not a crook. He is a disc. He's a dear sweet wolf. I'd like to punch him on the nose. You're being very silly. Let's see what you see in that guy. Naturally, the woman. How about a breathing spell? I just remembered I have an important phone call to make. Certainly, darling. I'll be back in a minute. All right. probably calling one of his crook friends. You are too suspicious. The police questioned Steve, and he had absolutely nothing to do with the stealing of my jewels. Well, even the police can be wrong, too. Then. Look, John, you are my business manager, but there's nothing in our conduct that says that you can manage my heart. I happen to love Stephen. Love him? How can you love a man you don't know anything about? Stephen Brady pops up out of nowhere. Suddenly, he arrives in Hollywood and starts to run around with the picture people. Who is he? And what's his background? Why, I don't know. Well, why don't you find out? There's an extension phone over there. See who was calling. Listen in. Maybe you'll learn something. Come on, do this a favor for me, will you? All right. If we will satisfy your suspicions. Come on. But this is ridiculous. Go on. If I'm wrong, I'll apologize. All right. I tell you, I don't know what you're talking about. Save it, Steve. I know you've got the stuff. I owe you a vote of thanks for grabbing the stuff before I could get to it. But I'll be big-hearted about it. I'll let you keep 50%. That'll make everything even. What if I told the police that Duke Jurgens is in town? Go ahead and tell him. I'll be waiting for him in room 807 at the Mammoth Hotel. But when you do yell, copper, be sure and tell him about that little job we pulled in Long Island last summer. All right, Duke. I'll see you in a couple hours. That's better. And when you come, be sure and bring the stuff with you. I know where we can turn it over quick. I'll be seeing you. And don't try any funny business because I've got one of the boys trailing you all the time. Oh, John. What shall I do? Just leave everything to me. And don't let on like you know a thing. But my public. I'd rather lose all my jewels than have our public find out that I was engaged to a thief. Don't worry. I know a concern that handles such matters uh, painlessly. Let's get back. Sorry, Corrine, but I'll have to leave. Anything wrong? Yes. A friend of mine's quite ill and needs some financial assistance. Mm -hmm. Will I be seeing you for dinner? You sure will. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Excuse me? <laughs> oh, John. How could he do this? 
I think I'm going to faint. Here, here, here. Take it easy, Colleen. Look, that's why all professional people have business managers. Let me do the worry. Oh, you're so comforting, darling. Kiss me. Huh? I said, kiss me. Uh -oh. I just made a discovery that's going to change my whole life. I love you, John. Conroy, you're getting soft like your friend Jimmy Parker. Women get the same kind of treatment as men around this outfit. Just because a girl made Google wise at you was no reason for not bringing in her car. Ah, but boy, she said she just wanted to take one more ride in the country before I took her car. Then I get out to pick some daisies for her and I turn around and what happened? Bang, she drove away. No excuses. You should take a few pointers from Miles Hanover. There's a young man who has lifted skip tracing to the dignity of a profession. He doesn't lose any skips. Of course he doesn't. You hand him all the soft jobs. Well, that uranium couldn't even take a car away from a boy. No, no. No. Well, let's do something, Conroy. Hello, yeah? Uh, put him on. It's John Lawrence, business manager for Corrine Hill. You mean the movie queen who was robbed? Yeah. Uh, yes, Mr. Lawrence, what can I do for you? I would like to discuss the matter in strictest confidence. I'll be in your office at 11 o'clock this morning. Fine, I'll be waiting for you. Uh, oh, yes, indeed, you can depend on it. We can handle the matter in absolute secrecy. We never betray a confidence. <laughs> Why, you'd be amazed if I were to tell you the names of some of the stars, directors, writers, and even producers we've had as skips. <laughs> All right, Mr. Lawrence. Hey, goodbye. I'll bet it's something to do with that jewel robbery. Well, that's a little out of our line, ain't it? We don't locate crooks. Well, we can try, can't we? Sure. Jimmy Parker just called, Mr. Lanigan. Yeah? Where is he? Did he make a report on those two calls he made last night? No, he didn't. He's in jail. In jail? What for? Larceny, illegal entry, attempted attack. I quit counting at that point. Well, it serves him right. Let him stay there. Yes. Hey, wait a minute. Where are you going? Back to my work. Back to your... Look here, get our attorneys on the phone right away. What kind of a woman are you anyway, letting Jimmy Parker stay in jail? Yes. And you, on your feet. We're going to police headquarters. You said it. And there he is. The wolf that kept our daughter out all night. But John, she was safe in jail. Yeah? Why did she get that fur coat? They don't shoot Japanese weasels behind bars. Next case. James Parker, charged with unlawful entry, disturbing the peace, attempted assault and larceny. Also the case of Miss Mary Mulvaney, charged with being his accomplice. Is the complaining party Miss Lola Driscoll present? Miss Lola Driscoll. Your Honor, I represent the defendants. I move dismissal. Lack of prosecution. You have the answer to the complaining party case dismissed. Say, I told you they couldn't keep me in jail. Now what? Well, I'm going to call on that disco woman and get that radio. Not me. My next step is breakfast. The coffee in this jail is terrible. Okay, but remember, that disco woman made you spend a night in a cell. Where's your fighting spirit? All right, I'll go with you. Now we're getting someplace. Pardon me, pardon me, Parker. Suppose you tell me why you landed in jail. Hey, I ought to think you'll be disgracing our daughter. Are you all right, dear? And where'd you get the pretty coat? Well, well Jimmy... Say, was the gal with the radio good looking? Do you notice how quickly the judge granted my motion for dismissal? Hold oh, everything, will you? It's a long story, folks, and we can't talk here, and I'll tell it to you as soon as I know the ending. Mom, I'm sorry about Mary, but it wasn't my fault. Come on, honey. Hey, wait a minute. You remember me? I'm your boss. Now, whatever you're up to, I want you to drop it and be in my office by 11 o'clock. You understand? Okay, come on, honey. I wonder what Lanigan's pulling at 11 o'clock. Maybe they're holding a public firing for Mr. James Parker. You may think I'm silly, darling, but I'd be glad if you dig it out of the skip tracing business. I have to admit, it's pretty hectic. Well, maybe so. But I hope he doesn't find me till I get that Driscoll Dame's radio. My weasel! Oh, who's a weasel? Now, 
Oh, look, that guy. There's the guy that took my fur coat off of me. And that thing with him is wearing it. Yeah? Well, what are we waiting for? Peel off the coat, sister. Wait a minute. Hey, hey coat. What is this? Oh, I'll show you, coat. Coat. Oh, oh, sure, you pull out. <laughs> there you are, Duchess. Okay. Ready? Hey, wait a minute. You can't do this to me. You bother me, sister. What happened? We lost in the first round. And I hope Lanigan does fire you. Because you're there, or would you rather have an ambulance? <laughs> A whiff. I asked you boys to drop everything and sit in on this conference so you can see how Miles Hanover handles something really big. Uh, proceed, Mr. Lawrence. Well, as you know, Miss Corrine Hill's jewels were stolen, and I came to you because... Because you know of the boss's great record as a police detective before he founded this business. And were confident he could produce results. Exactly. But I'm puzzled as to how the jewels could have been stolen from the wall safe without awakening her. But I came to the conclusion that... She'd been drugged? Yes. Yes. And I naturally figured that... Uh, it was an inside job. Yes. Yes. And I deducted that someone close to her had administered a sleeping potion, perhaps in a drink. And I suspected that... Steve Brady. Because he was a rest guard on the night of the robbery. He knew the layout of her home and enjoyed the confidence any young woman has in her fiancé. Right? Yes. Yes. Are you listening to this, Mr. Parker? No. Yes. You got me doing it now. My suspicions have been confirmed. No. No. Yes. Tell him about it, Mr. Lawrence. Well, this morning, Steve Brady made a telephone call while playing badminton with Corrine. I induced her to listen in on the extension phone. And? And a party giving his name as Duke Jurgens threatened Steve Brady with dire things if he didn't split the loot. Duke Jurgens was staying at the Mammoth Hotel. Duke Jurgens? Why, well, he's a notorious jewel thief. Which makes our case very simple. Jurgens is putting the heat on Brady. We wait for them to meet, close in, get the jewels, and notify the police. It's a cinch. No. What do you mean, no? Well, I imagine the reason Mr. Lawrence consulted us was because he wanted to keep the cops out of it. After all, Steve Brady is engaged to Miss Hill. Was engaged to her. You're right about keeping the police out of it. She should be protected against notoriety and ridicule. The public should never know she was engaged to a thief. Mm, I see. What you want to do, if possible, is recover the jewels and arrange for Steve Brady to drop quietly out of the picture. Exactly. I get it. And for this, I am prepared to pay a fee of $5,000 in addition for the $10,000 award payable by the insurance company for the return of the jewels. We'll take the case. Miles, the matter is in your hands. You will find Mr. Hanover very efficient. I'll cooperate in every way. Don't worry about a thing, Mr. Lawrence. I'll start right now by looking up Mr. Duke Jerkins at the Mammoth Hotel. Thank you. Boss, you should have given me that job. It's right up my alley. You haven't got an alley, Parker. And where's that fur coat? Oh, the fur coat. Well, I had it, and then I didn't have well, it. Well, make up your mind. Oh, and how about that Briscoe woman's radio? I'd have had it here now if you hadn't told me I had to come here. I'll get that radio this afternoon if it's the last thing I do. Right, because if you don't get it, it will be the last thing, thing you I do. do. Yes. And that goes for you in that car you let that woman get away with. Mr. Lanigan, you make things painfully plain. Oh, is that so? Oh, oh here's another little skip for you, Parker. One that you can handle with your eyes closed. A man named Bert Egan skipped with an electric washer after making only one payment. All you've got to do is bring in $105,000 in cash or the washing machine. Don't worry about it, boss. I'll have it that... Wait a minute! It says here Egan's wanted by the police. Yeah. For breaking one collector's jaw and tossing another one through a plate glass window. Will uh, you excuse me? Sweet fellow, the boss. Another soft job, Parker. Well, he sounded like he meant it. Yeah, but listen. If you see a blonde driving a blue Ford Coupe with license number 1T1356, grab it for me, will you? Now, this ain't much of a job, but I sure do need that wolf poison it brings in every week. I'll do the best I can. Wait right here, honey. I'll be back with the radio in five minutes. Seems to me I heard that story before. Try and stay out of jail. I'll do my best. Don't worry. This time I'm playing for keeps. Wait a minute. Thanks, pal.
Cheerio. What, you again? I'd like to see Miss Lula Driscoll. You're a little bit late. She moved out this morning. Oh. Uh-huh. Probably didn't want to be bothered by any more phonies. Oh, that was a dirty trick I played on you last night, and I apologize. I'm not supposed to tell anybody who I really am. I'm a G-man. I couldn't tip my mitt. I'm on the trail of a mob of counterfeiters. Oh, who are you trying to kid now? No, that's on the level. Look, the cops pinched me last night, didn't they? Uh-huh. Well, here I am today free. They just pinched me so Lulu Driscoll wouldn't be suspicious. No kidding. You mean she's one of them? <laughs> sure. And I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't mean a little money in your pocket if you remember where she moved to. There's a big reward out for counterfeiters. She didn't leave any address. No. Uh-uh. She sent all the furniture to storage. Remember the name of the storage company? Yeah. It was the McGinnis Storage House. I saw the truck. Did you see him take the radio? Say, are you sure you're not just after that radio? You guessed it, beautiful. Well, cheerio. Take it. Cheerio. Uh, office. Boy, oh boy, what a break. My job is safe for democracy, the sun is shining, the sweetest girl in the world by my side. <laughs> what more could a fellow want? The Driscoll Radio. I walked right into that. Look. See that sign? Uh-huh. Let's go and see what it looks like. But why? Oh, I'm a man of many impulses. I've got a hunch something very lucky is going to happen to me. Let's get married. Huh? Right away. On a hunch? Sure, why not? I've got 600 bucks in the bank and a job that'll be safe as soon as I pick that radio up at McGinnis' storehouse. <laughs> I love you, you love me. What are we waiting for? But Jimmy, I think... Don't think. It's bad for posterity. People about to plunge into matrimony shouldn't think too much. Come on. I don't know why I'm doing this, but I am. Wait a minute. <laughs> I think I look in front of that fireplace with my cigarettes and slippers. Yeah, I can fix this place up real cute. Jimmy, furniture's so expensive. Oh, there's a million bargains in the paper every day. But we're going to pay cash. I'm not going to have any skip traces moving our beds out from under us. Jimmy. <laughs> well, shall we put a deposit on the place? You certainly got a lot done in one day. Just getting a good start. How much did you say that was? You look at the furniture as well, I'll go in and grab that radio. Okay. Oh, I almost forgot. We already have one chair. It looked great in front of the fireplace. I've had it for years. I'll be right back. I've got skip trace is limited. You stored some furniture here today from Miss Lulu Driscoll. That's right. You want furniture? Speed motto. You want all of it? No, just the radio. Radio? There wasn't any radio. Are you sure? Positive. Well, have you got a new address? See? Yeah. She moved to 2266 Marble Cliff Drive. 2266 Marble Cliff Drive. Thanks. What about the furniture? Keep it. Find anything? This looks good. Death and family compels her to sacrifice five rooms of nearly new furniture at fraction of the original cost. Mrs. Brown Mill, 6775 Hathaway Drive. That's for us. Let's go. What about the radio? Well, she didn't move the radio in with the rest of her things, but I've got a new address. Boy, will she be surprised to see me. On the way out there, we can have a look at the furniture. It breaks my heart to part with all my lovely things. So many tender memories of my poor dear Alfred who passed away. Right in the prime of life he was. Only 44. Oh, that's too bad. You say, uh, $350 will handle the whole thing? Yes. Excuse me just a moment. Someone's at the front door. What do you think? Everything's lovely. It's such a bargain. 
You can get plenty of bargains for cash. I'll make her out a check. How do you do? How do you do? How about that payment? We want to be reasonable, Mrs. Brownell, but you haven't made a payment since you bought the stuff. I know. I'm afraid I'll have to have one of our trucks pick it up this afternoon. Oh, please, don't do that. I don't have the payment this afternoon yet. By five o'clock without fail, the insurance man is here right now with papers for me to sign to collect poor Alfred's insurance. You knew, of course, my husband passed away. No. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Makes things different, too. We won't hurry you, Mrs. Brown. Now, you take your time about the payment. Make it uh, 5.30, even 6 o'clock. That's okay. Don't forget our establishment is known as the Friendly Store. Good day. Good day. Well, have you two reached a decision? Yeah, we'll take it. Here's your check, $350. Thank you, and I hope you find as much pleasure out of it as I've had. Well, if I can use your phone, I'll have this stuff out here in a jiffy. Certainly, and while you're doing that, I'll run over to the bank. She trusts me. What about the radio and your job? Oh, there's plenty of time. It's only 1.30. I'll take care of all that after we moved into our new home. Just leave everything to me. Oh, my heirloom. It was right there by the fireplace. <laughs> Why don't you put it down easy? Why do you... Oh, boy, what a chair. That's been with Mrs. College. It looks it. Don't you like it? Well, it isn't that I don't like it. It's just that it doesn't seem to fit in with the rest of the furniture. Ah, <laughs> you like it. It grows like it. Come here. <clears throat> Give me a kiss. Sorry. Oh! It's almost 3.30. We'll just have time to get married. Then we'll take a nice honeymoon trip. The 2266 Marble Cliff Drive and get that Driscoll woman's radio. Oh, oh, oh. boy, what a day. What a honeymoon. <laughs>
All right, sit down. Now, for the last time, where's the ice? You got it all wrong, dude. I didn't grab the stuff. Okay, taxi, I guess you'd better work on it. Fine. Baby boy, we keep abreast of the time. Taxi studied to be a dentist until they threw him out of college. He's going to work on you with that. It eliminates a lot of the rough stuff and saves a lot of time. A little bit of grinding with that and you'll sing like a canary. Now, oh, wait a minute, Duke. I tell you, I didn't grab wait a minute. I think his right by custom needs a lot of attention. Are you going to open wide or do we have to open it for you? Come on, open up. It'll only take for two or three days. Take that thing away. I'll talk. Fine. That's better. Now, where's the stuff? My girl has it. Lulu Disco? Where is she? 2266 Marble Cliff Drive. We'll talk to her. Come on. Hello, Mr. Lawrence. This is Miles Hanover. The man who always gets results, but quickly. You said you wanted to prove to Miss Hill that Steve Brady is a crook? That's right. Well, get this. Go to 2266 Marble Cliff Drive in about a half an hour, and you'll not only find Steve Brady with his fellow crooks, but you'll also find him with his real girlfriend. I'll be nearby, so don't worry about a thing. Thanks. We'll be there. I was just thinking, boys. Lulu hasn't got the ice, it might be necessary to play Carl and Stevie here for their one-way sightseeing tour. Don't worry, she's got them. Well, maybe we'd better pick up a car on the way out. We'll stop at the next market. Hey, taxi. Yeah? See what you can pick up on the way of a good, fast coupe. A whole afternoon getting that car back from a skip tracer, then somebody has to steal it. I want a policeman, quickly. Hello? Police department? This is Miss Nana Primrose, 2268 Marble Cliff Drive. There's a peeping Tom looking in my bedroom window. I can't help it if it is daylight. There's a man up a tree looking in my window. But this time, it's the truth. Goodbye. Attention car 34, attention car 34, go to 2268 Marble Cliff Drive, see a woman about a man up a tree, daylight teaching town boys, go get him, let's go.
Oh, baby. Hiya, Duke. Hello, boys. Hello, Lulu. You mind if we come in? Oh, why, no, certainly not. Let's all sit down and have a nice little chat. You're looking well, Lulu. Thanks, Duke. I never saw Stevie you looking so well either. You know, health is a wonderful thing. Must be that fresh fruit you get out here in California. Bring out the melon, we'll slice it. What is this? It's okay, baby. He's given the orders. If you're talking about the Corrine Hill stuff, I haven't got it. Haven't got it? Nope. When you sent me a note saying you were leaving for San Francisco, I played safe. Yeah? What did you do with it? I mailed everything to myself in Frisco. She's pulling a fast one, Duke. We'll find the stuff if we have to take the place apart. All right, mastermind. You look and I'll laugh. Take a look around. You take the front of the house. Hey, you, come down out of that tree or I'll mow you down. Come on, make it snappy. No luck, fellas. Can't find a thing. <laughs> but, but listen, officer, I... Shut up! What's the idea of being up in that tree? Well, I was up there on business. Huh? I can prove it. What? If you don't believe me, call Skip Traces Limited. Oh, Skip Traces, eh? I wouldn't believe anybody that works for that outfit. Come on, we'll see about that. Uh, but listen, officer, no, I... Shut up! Any funny stuff. Don't be childish. What did I want to get chummy with coppers for? Get out of sight. Sorry to trouble you, ma'am. But we found this fellow looking into your living room window from a tree. Know any reason why he'd be doing that? Oh, uh, yes, there is a reason. Uh, he's my brother. Your brother? But he said he... Oh, he's liable to say anything. Listen, what's the idea? Can't I entertain a gentleman friend without you snooping around? I'm over 21. Yeah, yeah, way over. And besides, I don't like the company you keep. First thing you know, they'll get you on a jam. Never mind that. <laughs> Just a little family argument, officer. We'll straighten it out, won't we, dear? Oh, sure. Well, okay, but it all sounds screwy to me. You better stop playing squirrel. You might pick the wrong tree sometime. He'll be safe with me, officer. <laughs> Goodbye. Sure. All right, Snoopy, what's the gag? Thanks for making it easy, gorgeous. Now I'm going to give you a break. Give me the jewelry and there will be no questions asked. Shh. Not so loud. Follow me. Steve! Hey, what's the idea? Help! Oh, smart day, eh? May. Take him in and tie him up. Who's the guy? Oh, I don't know. Why'd you let him in? I couldn't help it. The cops caught him snooping, and I figured we'd better have him inside. He's probably a private dick that works for that insurance company that underwrote the Corrine Hill stuff. So what? You take it. Yes? How do you do? My name is Corinne Hill. You may have heard of me. Oh, uh, yes. Sorry I didn't recognize you at first. You look so much younger in your pictures. I have been told I find Mr. Brady here. Mr. Stephen Brady. Stephen Brady? Why, well, sorry, I don't know the gentleman. Well, I'm afraid you've come to the wrong place. And I'm afraid you're not a very good liar. Just a minute. What is this? You say you don't know Steve Brady? That's what I said. Well, what's his picture doing on the radio? Okay, mister. So that's Steve Brady's picture. You, you mean to tell me that, that he's a friend of yours? Sorry, sister. He likes my acting better than yours. Always has. Boys. Why, Stephen, what is the meaning of this? I'm sorry, Corrine, but this isn't my party. To think that I once fancied I was fond of you. 
John, take me home. Why, well, of course, honey. Here they are. What do they want and how did they get here? Search me. All right, take him back and tie him up with the other monkey. Okay. Back here. Look at that, brother. Oh, get back there. But I am calling you. Sure, babe, I know, but I don't want your autograph. Get back. All right, I'm through fooling. Now, did you or didn't you mail that stuff up to San Francisco? What if I didn't? Listen, have you been pulling a fast one to save a few jewels when you know it'd be curtains for us? What guarantee have we that we'll be around if we give Duke the ice? You've got my word. Don't make me laugh. Don't you see, darling, we're safe as long as we keep the jewels. He won't dare pull anything. Let's give us 24 hours start and I'll send you word where you can find the stuff. Nothing doing, smart girl. That stuff is around here someplace. Hey, boy. Yeah? Fly these two up and storm in the back of that hot car. Okay, Duke. After you, folks. Don't worry, honey. They won't do a thing to us. That's what you think. All right, boys, take them away. Then come back and we'll find that stuff we have to tear this house apart. Well, Mrs. Parker, how do you feel? I'll feel much better when you picked up that radio and we can settle down to a plain and normal existence. At least for a couple of hours. Practically done, sweetheart. There it goes again. Must be all homely. You fellas stay out of sight, I'll take it. I'm James Parker from Skip Traces Limited. I want to see Miss Lulu Driscoll. Sorry, she's out right now. I don't know what time she'll be back. Could you call later? No deal. I came here to get the radio and it goes with me now. Otherwise, I'll have cops here in five minutes. Okay, fella, you get no argument from me. Go ahead and take it. I mean, don't blame me if that sister of mine gets in your hair. Thanks. She got in my hair last night. Where's the radio? In there. We had a lot of trouble getting this. Oh, here's a card that'll give your sister instructions if she wants to pay what she owes. Thanks. So long. So long. Well, honey, I got it. Well, Anakin's face be red when I walk in and bounce this baby on his desk. <laughs> Kit fell out. Toolkit? I never heard of a radio having a toolkit before. <laughs> well, <laughs> boy, oh boy! What's the matter? Do you see what I see? Diamonds. Sure, and they're Chlorine Hills, or I'm crazy. This is a fifteen thousand dollar reward for them. Ten thousand from the insurance company, and five more if there's no publicity. Boy, are we in the chips? That little Driscoll is mixed up in here. Sure, she's mixed up in this deal. That picture I took off the radio. That was Steve Brady. The guy that was with Colleen Hill the night of diamonds were stolen. No wonder that Driscoll dame beefed about me taking a radio. No wonder she had me pinched last night. Come on, let's get out of here. Look. What? That car. That's a skip car Bill Connor is looking for. 1P1356. Boy, this is our lucky day. Look, honey, you drive my car and I'll take that one. Now, you go back to our apartment and wait for us and don't move out of the place until I come for you. I'm going to get these back to Corrine Hill and collect. But, Jimmy, I... Don't ask questions. Hurry. Well, I guess the stuff ain't here. <laughs> Somebody's cutting the hot car. What? If they get away with Steve and Lulu, we'll never get the stuff. Come on.
all cars, attention all motorcycles, go to Wilshire Boulevard at once, intercept two speeding cars headed east, now being followed by police car number 34. Shooting the back of that car. I want Steve and Lulu alive. You can't get him from there. Then shoot! Yeah! Possess that car. I'm telling you, you made a mistake, pal. That's my car. You don't look like any blue eyed blonde to me. Come on, Come on, break it up. Come on. Come on, break it up. Come on, move. Oh, so it's you. Hello, pal. Don't pop me. You're under arrest. What for? We're back on all the traffic laws in the book and driving a stolen car. Oh, I didn't steal that car. That's a skip account job. I repossessed it along with his sister's radio. Oh, yeah? Then why was he and his pal shooting at you? What about it, fella? Why, you ask me? I wasn't doing any shooting. You can search me if you think I'm carrying a rod. Oh, smart, ain't you? As though I didn't see you and your pal flush your guns out of the car. Now, where is this radio that you say you repossessed? In my car. Open up the back of that car and see if you're telling us the truth. Oh, that isn't my car. We know that. Open it up. There's a couple of bodies in here, and he probably killed them. So you're a kidnapper too, huh? Now, wait a minute. This has gone far enough. I was supposed to keep the cops out of this on account of publicity, but fun seems to be fun when my own father-in-law calls me a kidnapper. Now, that's Steve Brady, the guy that stole Corrine Hill's jewels. And that's Lulu Driscoll, his gun mall, and the other three fellas were in on it, too. They must have stolen this car from our skip account. And that's the truth, Pop. You're crazy. And you're not my son-in-law. All right. I'll prove one thing at a time. There's the jewels. And if you want to look over their hideout, go to 2266 Marble Cliff Drive. 2266 Marble Cliff Drive? I was there once before today to see about a man up a tree. I know it. <clears throat> 10,000 bucks. All right, take him out. All right, you Let's go. Come on. Get going. Come on, you too. Don't push. Well, come on. Great work, my boy. Of course, you'll get the $10,000 reward, and I'm going to open a new department. Lost wills and missing heirs, and you're going to be in charge of it. Oh, that's swell, boss. That's a great wedding present, isn't it, Pop? Wedding present? What do you mean? Your daughter became Mrs. James Parker this afternoon. Pop, I want you to come over and see us any old time you feel like it. He can take his shoes off, too, can't he? Oh, sure. <laughs> Um, you were right about that house on Marble Cliff Drive being a hideout. We found these three there. Hanover, were you in that house? Yes, indeed. And uh, what's more, I'm about to recover Miss Hill's jewels for Are me. you crazy? I'll show you how crazy I am. I uh, see you repossessed Miss Driscoll's radio. That's right. Well, what you didn't know was the jewels were hidden inside that radio all the time. No fool. Yes, indeed. Watch closely. They must be here. I saw Miss Driscoll put them here. She did. I took them out. Here are your jewels, Miss Hill. I'm sorry I couldn't get them back to you without the cops butting in, giving you all this publicity. <laughs> the publicity has been simply marvelous. My press agent tells me I made front page in every paper in the country. But Mr. Lawrence wanted to protect you from all publicity and notoriety. Oh, John, it's old-fashioned. He doesn't realize that publicity is the lifeblood of an important star. Hmm. You dear, brave boy, you. Do you mind if I kiss you? Just one little 
Kid. Don't have to speak to my wife. <clears throat> Wait a minute. I gotta carry you over the threshold. The switch is on the left there, honey. We're gonna be just as cozy as a couple of bugs in a... Furniture has been repossessed by Skip Trace's limited. Oh. Looks like your sins have caught up with us. 